Hello everyone. So today we are going to solve two questions from our new chapter. And the title of our new chapter is Translation of Financial Statements. So we have two methods. The first method is about current method. So when we are going to use the current method, look at the conditions when a company use the current method when they translate financial statements. First, we should assume that we are a US company. That means we are a parent company and our head office is located in the US. This is the first condition that we are parent company and we are located in US. Second, we have a subsidiary located in another country. For this example, in Switzerland. Right, so we have two companies, parent and subsidiary. We live in several countries. Third and last condition, the subsidiary company prepared a financial statement using a local currency. So our subsidiary company prepared financial statement using which currency? The local currency. So this is the important keywords here. For example, Swiss francs. So if this is the case, as a parent company, when we prepare a consolidated financial statement, then we need to translate our subsidiary's financial statement, okay, from Swiss to dollar, Swiss franc to the dollar. So in this case, we are going to use the method called the current method. So I repeat again, our subsidiary company prepared financial statement using a local currency. And for this example, it is Swiss franc. And when we translate our subsidiaries financial statement, we are going to use the current method. So there are several steps for the current method. <clears throat> so first step, revenues and expenses are translated using the average rate. So the exchange rate here, one terminology we are going to use is called the average rate. So it is given in the question. What is the average rate is given in the question. Although if it is not given in the question, we can easily calculate it, the average rate. Then beginning return earnings, step two. Step two, beginning return earnings. And here we are going to translate our beginning return earnings, and we use here we use here historical cost historical cost rate. So how to understand it is a historical cost rate? For example, January first, the rate given the rate given in January first is called the historical cost rate, historical cost rate. So the question may not tell you this is historical cost rate. Question may give you one exchange rate based on January 1st, okay? So January 1st rate is called historical cost rate. Then you know this formula, beginning return earnings plus, beginning return earnings plus, net income minus dividend. We know this formula, minus dividend. So net income is already calculated from step one. Net income is already calculated from step one because step one, we are going to use revenues and expenses. And you know that revenue minus expense equal net income. So we are going to calculate the net income based on the average rate. So we have beginning return earnings, we have net income that collected from step one. Now dividends, how to translate dividends based on dividend. Dividend declaration date rate. So when company declared the dividend, the date of declaration already have a rate and based on this dividend declaration date rate, we are going to translate the dividend. This is a step two. Step three, we go to the balance sheet 
and the balance sheet will find our paid in capital. Okay, paid in capital means common stock, preferred stock, something like this. So if we have any paid in capital, we have to translate this paid in capital based on historical, historical cost rate. So again, what is the meaning of historical cost rate? This is the historical cost rate, January first rate. January first rate is the historical cost rate. This is a step three. Then move on to step four. We have assets. We have liabilities. And these assets and liabilities are translated into current rate. Into current rate. Again, the question may not give you the current rate. So current rate is like this. Current rate means it, the rate as on December 31st. The rate as on December 31st is called the current rate. Okay, so the rate are given in the question. Okay, so January 1st rate, December 31st rate. Okay, then average rate, historical cost rate, and the dividend declaration rate. This rate are given in the question. Then step five, step five said that cumulative translation adjustment. We need to do one adjustment at the last part. Okay, so the adjustment we are going to make in the balance sheet. So if it is a cost method, if it is a cost method, sorry, current method, if it is a current method, the adjustment is going to make under balance sheet. And the adjustment will follow this formula, assets equal libraries plus stockholders equity. So we are going to prove, we are going to prove this balance sheet equation, assets equal libraries plus stockholders equity. If if asset is not equal to this two, we need to do some adjustment. Okay, for example, asset is $100,000. Liabilities is $30,000. And for example, equity is 60,000. If this is the case, you can see that or it is something like 90,000, for example. So 30,000 and 90,000. If this is the case, we find that assets are not equal with liabilities and stockholders equity. So how to make it equal? Then we have to deduct 10,000 or 20,000. 20,000 from here. Another example, another example, if assets and liabilities are not equal, like this. Sixty thousand, then we are going to add, then we are going to add another ten thousand here. Something like this. So we have to make our asset, so we cannot change this part. Asset part we cannot change. We are going to adjustment, we are going to make adjustment with our equity account. We can minus 20,000 or we can plus 10,000 to make it equal. So this kind of things we are going to solve step by step. This is our first question. On January 1st, 2018, the Trenton Systems, a US-based company purchased a controlling interest in grant management consultant located in Juris, Switzerland. So our subsidiary, our subsidiary is located in Switzerland. And we are the parent company. We are US based company. Now we got the comparative balance sheet and income statement and return earning statement from our subsidiary company. So this is the subsidiary company and we got their comparative balance sheet. Comparative balance sheet means, okay, compare of beginning and the ending balance. 
that's why it is called comparative. So we have beginning balance data and we have ending balance data, like this is the January 1st data for assets, liabilities, common stock and equity and return earnings, and this is the December 31st. So this is balance sheet. In the balance sheet, we have, we have asset. So these two are the asset. We don't need to think about too much of their classification. So we have asset, we have liabilities. This is equity, and this is equity. This is equity. So this is given in the question. Then we have consolidated net income and return earnings statement. You can see that this is the revenue minus expense equal the net income. So this is the subsidiary's net income, then minus dividend, $15,000, okay, equal the return earnings. You know this formula, net income, okay, minus dividend, right? So this is very simple, you already know that. And the question, I told you that question will give you the rate. Question will give you the rate. So I told you that if it is January 1st, it is called historical rate. Historical rate. This is December 31st, it is called current. Current rate. And uh, And I told you that if this rate is not given average, it is something like beginning, ending, that means historical rate plus current rate divided by two. You can calculate the average rate. So in the question, I may give you the average rate, don't worry. And uh, dividend declaration date rate and the payment date rate is given this one. So what you have to remember, that is not given in the question. So when we are going to use this historical rate, okay, it is if it is beginning return earnings. So when we translate, when we translate our beginning return earnings, we use the historical rate and also common stock. common stock. So these are the situation we use the, if it is, I mean, if it is uh, current method, I mean, if it is the current method, then we are going to think this way. So beginning return earnings and common stock are translated using historical rate and how, who are the current rate? If you remember, it is assets and liabilities. So assets and liabilities, we are going to use the current rate. <clears throat> and when we are going to use the average rate, if it is revenue and expense. So revenue and expense, we are going to use the average rate and this is dividend. Dividends. So this information you may not give in the question. I mean, up to here. This is not given in the question and also question do not give you these steps. Okay, you have to remember these steps so that you can easily solve the question. So first step, revenue and expense are translated. Using which method? Using the average method. This is revenue and expense. We are going to use average method. Look at the solution here. So according to this question, what is the revenue? Revenue is $75,000, you can see that. So we are going to use this data now, okay? So revenue is $75,000, so I can write here. So this is revenue, 
and we are going to use the average rate, which is this one. So revenue and expense, we use this rate. Revenue minus expense. And when we translate it with the average rate, US dollar said that it is 42,405. And this is 16,000. 16,962. Now revenue minus expense equal net income. $45,000 net income. And we, our net income in using dollar is uh, 25,443. 25,443. So, although you will no need to show it in the exam, but I can get an first from that. So, this is step one. step one. So you, we go to a step one again, you can see that revenue and expense are translated using average method and we calculate net income. <clears throat> Now, step two, can you remember this net income? That net, net, this net income is going to add here beginning return earnings, right? Plus net income, it came from step one, right? Minus dividend, right? And we know that beginning return earnings, when we translate it, we use historical cost rate. And when we translate dividend, we use dividend declaration rate. And our question give us this information. Our question give us. This is the dividend, right? This is the dividend. And what is the beginning return earnings? This is the beginning, January 1st. This is the beginning return earnings. It is given, right? So beginning return earnings, $10,000. And dividend declaration date rate is this one. So this is the dividend declaration date rate. Yes. No, no, this is, <clears throat> sorry, not this one. Dividend is this one. Beginning return and see the historical rate. Yes. So it is five, nine, eight, seven, five, nine, eight, seven. Then dividend, you know that dividend is minus sign, right? Dividend is minus and it is $15,000. And uh, it is something like 8751. So here you can put the first bracket or, or you have another option, use the minus sign like this, right? Because we know that return earnings minus dividend, right? Beginning return is minus dividend and plus net income. Plus net income. So look at this formula now. This is net income is plus, right? I show you here again. We already have beginning return earnings. We have net income plus minus dividend, right? Minus dividend. So we can do here. We have net income, return earnings plus, minus dividend. We get the ending return earnings and it is $40,000. And it is 22,751. And if you remember up to here, it is a step two. Step two. In this step two, we calculate our return earnings. Step two. Now look at step three. 
look at step three. So paid in capital, paid in capital is translated using historical cost. Now what is the paid in capital? Common stock is the paid in capital, okay? And paid in capital amount is given here in the portion, paid in capital $20,000. Paid in capital $20,000, I put here. And it used the historical rate, this is the historical rate. Historical rate, so what is the amount here? So the amount is 29 to, uh, no, it is uh, 11974. So 11974, so this is step three. Step three. So we know our step one, two, and three. Now, step four said that assets and liabilities, right? Assets and liabilities are going to translate using which rate? Using the current rate, December 31st rate. Now, question already give us this information. Cash is $55,000. And the rate is current rate is this one. We are going to use this rate here, here, here. So this three, we are going to use the current rate. Then property plan and equipment 37,000. When we translate it, it is 29. Two six six. Then nineteen six eight eight. Something like this. Now we add these two. We find the total asset. Ninety two thousand is the total asset here, and forty eight nine fifty three. Yes. So we find the total asset, right? Now we need liability. Liability is $40,000. No, liability is $32,000. And it is 17,027. So look, we now we have total asset. We have liabilities. We have common stock and we need retained earnings. So retained earnings already calculated from a step two. You can see that from a step two, we already calculated retained earnings, right? So this we are going to copy and paste here. So this retained earnings is a step two. A step two. Because you can see that this is the step two formula. Beginning, Retained earnings plus net income minus dividend equal retained ending earnings. So you already calculated retained earnings here. We just copy and paste here. Now we need to do the adjustment because we know that we know that the asset. This is our asset. When we translate. When you translate our asset is $48,953, right? This is the asset. And we know that asset equal libraries plus common stock, according to this example, common stock plus retained earnings. We should be uh have, we should have the same amount so where we find that our asset is this but what about our liabilities common stock and equity we find that it is if we add total everything it is 51 it is 51 715 if we add liabilities look this three liabilities 
then common stock and equity if you add these three okay if you add these three it is 51 51 7 on 5 right 51 7 on 5 so asset and liabilities are not equal here so if it is not equal i told you that we have to keep our asset as it is that means we cannot change we we cannot make any adjustment here this is fixed now here we have to deduct we have to deduct two seven six three dollar okay two seven six three two seven six three dollar so if we deduct this then this is the equal now 48 953. So this is the short workings you need to do by yourself. And this amount is the adjustment amount. I told you that this amount may be plus, this amount may be minus. Sometimes plus, sometimes minus to make it equal with our asset, right? Like I already told you here, this one. We may deduct some amount, we may add some amount, okay? Because we have to make it equal of our asset. Now, according to this example, we have to deduct $2763 from the equity, and this is the adjustment. Cumulative translation adjustment. Now we have to deduct $2763. If we deduct this number, if we deduct this number, now we can see that asset equal liabilities, common stock and equity and with adjustment is the same. Okay, so this is called the current method. The same question, the same question we are going to use the temporal method. Same question, we are going to use the temporal method in part B. <clears throat> so when, although, although in the question paper, I will clearly mention about the method, like look at the first question. The first question I said that, translate year-end balance sheet and income statement of foreign subsidiary using which rate method, using current rate method. The same question, same question I am going to use here. And this is the requirement. Convert financial statement of foreign subsidiary using temporal method. But as an accounting student, <clears throat> you must know when we are going to use the current method and when we use the temporal method. So can you remember when we use the current method? If our subsidiary, if our subsidiary prepared financial statement using a local currency, right using a local currency so if you go for cp exam maybe they may not mention the method okay so when our subsidiary when our subsidiary prepared financial statement using the local currency then we are supposed to use current method but if look at here If we have this condition again, that we are parent company and our company's headquarter is located in US, no problem, right? Same as previous. We have a subsidiary company in another country like Switzerland or Canada, something like this. Clear? That means there is a border, right? There is a border, our subsidiary is another countries. But sometimes, the subsidiary company prepared financial statement not using the local currency like Swiss franc, but using US dollar. Using US dollar. Do you understand my point? So if your subsidiary company located in another country, but they prepared financial statement using US dollar, then we should use the temporal method. Okay, so this is the difference when we use current method, when we use temporal method. 
So you know that in the US, uh, there is a border near Newark, it's called Niagara Fall. That means Canada and Newark, very close, okay? So if you have any subsidiary just close to Canada, okay, Canadian border, they may use the US dollar, okay? So if this is the case, uh, we have to follow the temporal method. Although they are preparing their financial statement using US dollar, but when we translate, okay, because this is from another country's money, right? When we translate this, we have temporal method. Again, <clears throat> we have several steps to go on. Step one. Step one, we are going to divide our asset we are going to divide our asset into two groups. Look at here. We are going to divide our assets two groups. And these are non-monetary assets, non-monetary assets and the monetary asset. So now you should know who are the monetary asset and who are the non-monetary asset. Let me give you example here for monetary asset. It is cash and cash equivalent. Okay, cash and cash equivalent are called the monetary asset. And who is the cash equivalent in our case? It is accounts receivable. So cash and cash equivalents are going to translate using whose rate? Using the current rate. Okay, so before we did not classify, right? According to the current method, we did not classify whether it is monetary or non-monetary. But when temporal method came, then we classify our asset, whether it is monetary asset or non-monetary asset. So who are the examples of non-monetary asset? The examples are except cash and account receivable, all other assets like uh, property, plant and equipment. Okay, except cash and cash equivalents, all other assets are called non-monetary assets. So when we have non-monetary assets, we have to translate them. And whose rate we are going to use? We are going to use historical rate. Again, what is the meaning of historical rate? It is January 1st rate. And current rate is the December 31st rate. Clear? Then we convert or we translate our paid in capital means common stock or preferred stock using the previous one like same historical rate. Okay. So we have asset, look at here. We have asset, so another, I forget to tell you here. Liabilities use, who is it, can you remember? current rate, current let me check temporal method <clears throat> yes, the current rate. So we translate our non-monetary assets, monetary asset, we translate our liabilities, we translate our, our paid in capital, okay? Then, then we have to calculate the return earnings using the plug number. Plug number means the missing number. This is a step one, okay? This is a step one. This is our step one. 
Yes, so we use current rate, okay, for the liabilities, right? I confirmed it, yes. So this is step one. This is step one. I repeat again, we divide our asset, monetary and non-monetary. Then monetary asset use current rate, non-monetary use historical rate, liabilities use current rate, paid in capital use historical rate. Then our missing number is retained earnings. We have to plug this number, we have to find a missing number. Then step two, revenues are uses the average method, average method, no problem, but we are going to divide our expenses into two groups. Look at here, we are going to divide our expenses into two groups. One expense is related with assets and liabilities. Now, as an accounting student, you must know which expense are related with asset. Then remember, which expenses are related with asset account? Depreciation, very good. Depreciation expense are related with asset, right? Property, plant, and equipment, except land. And uh, if you understand this, then you should also know which expenses are related with liabilities. Can you remember? Who are the expenses? Interest expense, very good. Like we have uh, bonds payable, we have notes payable, interest section, very good. Interest expense. So this depreciation expense and interest expense, if we have this, we are going to translate this using historical, using historical rate, okay? Except these two, other expenses are using the average rate. Okay. So here you can see the revenue minus expense, right? Revenues minus expense. Revenues minus expense. Equal, we are going to calculate, we are going to calculate preliminary income. And what is the other name of Preliminary income, it is called income before adjustments. This is income before adjustment. It, it means that we need to do some adjustment. We need to do some adjustment. So for exam, example, our revenue minus expense, we find that it is 50,000. Revenue minus expense, is 15,000, 50,000, and we find, for example, our net income, net income is 45,000. If this is the case, look, these two numbers not equal. Net income, 45,000, and a preliminary income, that means income before adjustment, it is 50,000. So if we have this situation, if we have this situation, we need to do adjustment. We need to do adjustment. Now we have to know this adjustment we needed is a good news or bad news. So according to this, to this example, it is a good news or bad news. Your actual net income is $45,000, okay? Actual net income is $45,000, but preliminary income is $50,000. It is a good news or bad news. It is a bad news, right? Because actual net income is 45, but preliminary income is $50,000. So we have a bad news, we need to do adjustment. So bad news means, okay, that means it is our loss. It is our loss. So our adjustment is called loss. So we may have gain, okay, in, 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 in your question, in your question, it may have loss, or you may have gain. So according to this example, it is loss. If it is opposite 55, your net income is $55,000, okay? Net income is $55,000, but preliminary income is $50,000. If this is the case, it is a good news. Then it is not loss, it is called gain. It is called gain. So this kind of adjustment we need to do in a step two. And where, where we are going to do this kind of adjustment? 
you are going to do this kind of adjustment in the income statement. If you remember the current method, we need adjustment in the balance sheet, right? So if you go for CP exam, maybe you have this kind of multiple choice question that when we need adjustment for current method, which account we are going to adjust in the balance sheet account, right? But in case of temporal method, we do the adjustment in the income statement. So I believe you understand step one and step two. Now step three, you know that dividend, you are going to use the dividend declaration rate method and the return earnings formula. Okay, return earnings formula. We know everyone, we know this beginning return earnings plus net income minus dividend, minus dividend. I told you that I put a number here, net income. Because we know, we know our preliminary income based on the calculation. And this number, this $55,000, this number we should calculate by using a plug number. This is important here. So this net income, this net income we should calculate based on a plug number, missing number. And how to find this missing number? You know this formula, beginning return earnings plus net income. Okay, so all numbers are given except this one. You are given beginning return earnings. You are given dividend. You are given dividend. You are given ending return earnings. Okay. If you have this number, then net income is the plugging number. Right. So this plug number we have to calculate. We have to put here to compare whether we have any gain or loss. This kind of things we are going to do in our step four. So when we have this plug number, then we do the adjustment. So step five is the adjustment. Step five is the adjustment. That this is the net income minus preliminary income. We may have plus or minus gain or loss. You understand? So you have to remember this kind of simple steps. So look at here again, first plug number, first plug number is the return earnings because this return earnings we are going to put where? We are going to put here, the return earnings that we calculated. This return earnings we calculated from our step one. And step one is very easy because we know our asset, we know our liability, we know our common stock, right? Then the remaining amount is the return earnings. Then step two is very simple because we calculate preliminary income. That means revenue minus expense, right? And we divide our expense into two groups, asset and liability related expense and other expenses. So revenue minus expense equal preliminary income. So out here you no need to think about net income at this moment, but this is for your uh, reference. Then we calculate dividend and we have beginning return earnings. We have dividend. We have written earnings ending. Our plug number is the net income. So when we have net income, now we compare. We compare our preliminary income and the net income here. This is our preliminary income. And this is the plug net income. We do some adjustment, very, very simple. You need to do a little practice. So read this question, the same question we are going to use. Same question we are going to use here. but we use the temporal method. And according to the temporal method, we are going to start everything from which account? Income statement or balance sheet? This is the balance sheet item, right? This is the balance sheet item. So temporal method, our step one is start from balance sheet, not from the income statement. Income statement is step two. So let us start. That's why first is balance sheet. First is balance sheet. Now cash, you know that cash is monetary asset and PPE is non-monetary. Yes. And uh, we know the rate here according to this question. So we already I already mentioned here. Oh, 
Okay, let me do it with me. So 55,000 is the, 55,000 is the cash. Then we are going to re, we are going to use this method. I mean this rate, current rate. And the amount is 29,266. So property, plant, and equipment, we are going to use the historical rate method. This is the historical rate. And it is $37,000. So monetary and non-monetary assets are translated. And look at the rate, non-monetary you use historical and cash and cash equivalent, we use the current. Now total asset 92,000. Here 51,418. Okay, so assets are translated. Now we are going to translate liabilities. We are going to translate common stock, right? Then the plug number is the written earnings. So accounts payable is given, it is uh, 32,000. And accounts payable, we use the current rate. And it is 17, 0, 27. Then common stock is 20,000. We use historical rate, okay? We use historical rate for the common stock and it is, it is 11, 974, 974. Now look at this example here. So we have asset, look at here, this is our asset. This is our asset. This is our liabilities. And this is our common stock. And this is missing. This is missing, but we know what is the formula. We know that asset equal liabilities and equity, right? So if you know asset, if you know liabilities, if you know common stock, and plug number is the written earnings. So here plug number is the 22417. This is the plug number. The plug number. So we done our step one. We done our step one. So when you translate our return earnings, this is the amount of return earnings. This is step one, right? Hmm. Step one done. Go to step two, revenue minus expense. Revenues average rate, right? Minus, we have to divide our expense into two groups equal, we are going to calculate our preliminary income here. And look at this question. According to this question, this is the total expense is $30,000. $30,000 is the total expense. And in this expense, we have 3000 depreciation. So this depreciation is asset related expense, right? Assets related expense. And we already know this. If we have asset related expense, we are going to use which rate? We are going to use historical rate. And other, we are going to use the average rate. So go to the income statement and revenues, we use the average rate, you know that. Revenues is given, revenue is 75,000. 
and it is it is average rate this average rate yes so the amount is 42 405 this is revenue and look we have expenses into two groups so revenue minus expense Now 3,000, I can put fast bracket also here, no problem. And it is, we are going to use the historical rate. So we use depreciation historical rates. It, this is 1796. Then we have other expenses, it is 27. Because total is 30. Total is 30,000, 3,000 is the depreciation and 27,000 other. And other we use the So let me confirm other we use the average rate. Is the average rate. And the amount is fifteen two six six. Now we calculate uh, we calculate preliminary income. That means income before adjustment, mm -hmm. and it is when you translate it. When you translate it, it is twenty five three forty. So this is the preliminary income, right? So step three, look at here. Sorry, step two. In step two, you already calculate. We already calculate our preliminary income. Step two done. Step two. We calculate preliminary income and step three, we convert dividend, right? Yes. So this is step two. What is the dividend? This is step three. In the exam, you no need to show me this step. This is for your reference. Next time when you prepare by yourself, you can easily understand. So this column, you no need to show me. So dividend is here. So dividend amount is $15,000. And we know that dividend is the minus sign always. And the dividend declaration rate is here. And the amount is 8715. So step three done. Okay, go to step four. Step four, we are going to use this formula to calculate the plug number of, ne of net income, right? To calculate the plug number of net income. That means we need, <laughs> this is a step four. A step four. A step four is the net income, right? We have to calculate net income. And how to calculate this plug net income? This is the formula. Beginning return earnings given. What is the beginning return earnings? So this is the return. What is the beginning return earnings? Okay, beginning return earnings here in the question. Beginning return earnings. Return earnings ten thousand dollar, right? Beginning return earnings is the ten thousand dollars, and we already done here. Return earnings. This is ending. Okay, let me put this one first. 
return earnings this one dividend this one then beginning return earnings is 5987 So here according to this question, it is 10,000 and the rate is, rate is his triple rate. And it is 5987. So you put this number here. So we have beginning return earnings. We have dividend. We have ending balance of return earnings. Then what is the amount of net income, right? So the amount of net income, the plug number here is 25. 25145. So this is the plug number for net income. Plug. Now we are going to put this number in our step four because step four we did not have this information yet. We put it. Now compare these two. This is last step. Last step said that <clears throat> we need to do adjustment, right? This adjustment may be our, it's maybe transition gain or transition loss. Do you understand? The adjustment may be gain or maybe loss. <clears throat> so the formula is net income minus primary income. If net income is higher and preliminary income is lower, then we have a gain. If opposite, then loss. Maybe I can write here for your reference. If If net income is higher, premium income is lower, then it is called transition gain. transition loss. Yes, so this is the formula you can remember. Now, according to this question, according to this question, our net income is lower, okay? So here we have transition gain and within bracket, it is loss. Now, what will be the number here? It is gain or loss. Our net income is 25, 145, but our preliminary income is 25, 343. That means our net income is lower, right? Our net income is lower, preliminary income is higher. So you have a transition loss. You have a transition loss and it is 198. 198. So you, you have to use first bracket if it is loss. Okay. And if it is gain, you don't have the first bracket. So this is the adjustment. This is our adjustment. And if you remember, our adjustment is a step five. 
step by. So you have a step one, a step two, three, four, and five. So I repeat again in this question, you have to remember these steps. You have to remember these steps with which rate we are going to use. The question may not give you the steps. Question may not you give the information. Which rate you have to use for monetary? Which rate you have to use for non-monetary? Something like this, you have to remember. So the solution is very easy for this question, but you have to remember something by yourself. 